Pirate Ryan here. I have commandeered this vessel and tied up James. Pretty much took over everything. He did all the hard work to get the boat back in the water and I've now commandeered it. Speaking of that, if you want to see how he got the boat back in the water, you can click the link above, check out the live stream that he did. And now that it's my boat, there's going to be some changes made around here. I think I'm going to put an actual ceiling on the boat. May fix some pumps. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's good. I think it's going to be pretty good. I think it's going to be pretty good. Hey, hey, settle down in there. Back in your home. <laughs> I'm just gonna let him stand there. That's right, anyway. James. Go back. Go back. Good, James. I hope you enjoy the, the video. My name is James Evenson. I'm a mechanic, a musician, and a round the world sailor. Four years ago, I'd sold everything and made some interesting life choices. I bought a catamaran, built a hardtop, sailed to Cuba, painted shark's teeth on the front of the cat, lost a rudder, built a rudder in a shed, lost the other rudder, built a rudder on the beach, dressed in drag, made coffee in a sock, dressed in drag again, sailed to Easter Island, sank the dinghy, sailed to Pitcairn, sank the dinghy again, sailed to French Polynesia, sank the dinghy one more time, got a new dinghy. I meant to do that. Sailed to Hawaii, shipwrecked in Hawaii, rode the catamaran down the street at three o'clock in the morning, wrote some magazine articles, started a Kickstarter campaign, flew to Curacao, and now I'm finally grinding my way back to life on the water and my next adventure. Hey, you all know me. You know I'm a pretty positive person. This positive person is ready to sink his boat. I got shore power yesterday. The fridge is not working. The freezer's not working. Uh, the fridge pump is leaking and now is ruined because I didn't realize it until it was like sopping with water. And, you know, I kind of expected those things. What I didn't expect is for the, me to wake up and there was 500 gallons of water in the boat. I'm gonna blame this on the new crew. Uh, it's your fault. No. It was floating fine. No water was <laughs> ingressing until you got here. Wait. What did you do? <laughs> I got up this morning and there was so much water in the bilge. I mean, like we were down like two inches on the water line. My autom automatic bilge pump doesn't work. Switch it to manual, got the water out, and two minutes later, three minutes later, call it 10 minutes later, there's like three or four gallons of water in the bilge. So check this out. Can you guys see down there? All that water? That was bone dry 10 minutes ago. So there is something hissing water, and I don't know what it is. It's not coming from the through holes. Thank God for that. So what else could it be coming from? Like the keel bolts just decided today, like, oh yeah, we're just gonna let go and let water in. I'm a little pissed. I know you can't tell because of my calm, cool, collective demeanor. I'm ready to sink this thing. I should just let it sink. Insurance, boom, new boat. No, you've ruined it. Oh no! <laughs> Okay, so I got the batteries out, but um, you see that hole in the bottom? I just stuck my foot right through this battery box. There's nothing underneath it, man. There's nothing. Wood's already done. We're gonna have to figure out something to do about that. As your first day, this is your first day on the job. What do you think about the job so far? Um, it's a lot. It's a lot, but uh, it's exciting. I mean, I don't care that everything's broken. Like we can be here for two months. So what? <laughs> I don't want to be here for two months. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> yeah. You're okay with the mess? I'm okay with the mess. You already got battery acid and fiberglass on you. Yes. And grease. Yeah. Show them your grease. It won't come off. <laughs> I got some stuff to take that off. <laughs> so, yeah, but it's been fun. It's so hot. I'm, like dripping sweat while I'm working, but that's good. Okay, so, let's check back at the end of the day and see, see if you still feel so optimistic. <laughs> So I feel like I should address Brent's question because I, I really haven't gone over this with you guys yet, except for like maybe little texts. I don't want to leave until the boat is at least ready to safely sail to Florida. And by that, I've, I mean like really safe because I'm still traumatized by my old boat almost killing me. I'm not just gonna throw together the boat just to get to Florida, just because I said I would have you guys help me. You, you, there will still be tons of work for you guys to help me with, I promise. But this is like core boat things, you know? I gotta have power, I gotta have fresh water, and I have to have uh, uh, 
through hulls and you know a non-leaky boat. That's a long journey. I'm getting there. I, I promise. I'm gonna leave a lot of stuff for you guys to help me with. But I just I, I don't feel safe going to Florida at all without you know getting some of these jobs done correctly. Okay. Okay, to explain to the kids at home what <laughs> happened here. This was a battery box built by Oyster, plywood and fiberglass. And they did a really good job building it and it looks nice. But when the last guy decided to change the batteries, he wanted to put probably more batteries in and they didn't quite fit. They just cut the battery box and then filled it with epoxy to support this piece. Left it open down here. The batteries were sitting so long that they, they boiled over and they got battery acid into the here, ate through this, and now all that crap is getting into the bilge. And now I've got to redo all this, separate these two. This doesn't really have anywhere to go. Really, this is just a big job. The whole thing needs to go. And luckily, because I've got lithium, I don't think I need a sealed battery box. I'm not sure if OSHA rules on that. The shitty part is that this beam underneath this is also pretty fucked up. But that needs to be replaced. So all this shit needs to come off of it, but it'll happen. You gotta work for it, honey. You gotta work for it, work for it, honey. If you like to, we can go anywhere tonight. Oh my god. It's just like the worst wood ever. Like, I could crack this in half right now. Just crack, but I don't want to make a mess. sodium bicarbonate. Both good for acid reflux, getting the smells out of your kitchen, and cleaning out your acidic filled bilge. So we're gonna put this in the bilge because uh, that this is battery acid that came in here. And this stuff's not bad for the environment or anything. It's just, just baking soda. But it did have a lot of... Okay, that's one box. Now I'm gonna take a hose and like spray it all around and uh, that should, should negate the battery acid. And then we can suck it back out. It's time for the interview portion of, of the night. Now that the sun has set and it makes for nice diffuse lighting, you are going to answer questions from the audience. Did you bring lots of Dramamine? I did not. I brought ginger roots and I have some essential oils that I'm going to experiment with. That sounds like bullshit placebo effect, if anything. You've just decided that you're not gonna get seasick. Yes. The power of positive thinking. <laughs> Did you make me lose the stash? No, I liked the stash. Very upset when I saw it was gone. Really? <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't have a, a trimmer and it was getting out of control, but guess who has a trimmer? I do. Stash trimmer? Why do you have a beards trimmer? I mean, it's a, I mean. Is that a personal question? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Can you sing? No. Are you sure? I only look like a siren. Why are you crewing? Uh, I love the ocean. It calls to me. Moved from New Jersey my freshman year to Illinois, uh, landlocked state, and um, it scarred me. And I've been dreaming of the ocean ever since. Do you have any videography or cinematography skills? No, I have some amateur work. That's about it. Are you going to be on the boat just to Florida or more? We'll see. See if you get sick. <laughs> uh, what decisions and twists of life had led you to this point? I met James and he asked me to come on the boat. <laughs> yeah. I'm you, kind of a Well, why don't you person. tell them what we did? Because they don't know. 
I met James and shortly after that he asked me to come to Mississippi on a motorcycle which is uh, about eight hours from where we were. It was a bonding experience for sure. And how much notice did you get for that trip? Oh, two days? No, it was like 18 hours. <laughs> I, I told her I'm leaving tomorrow to go on a nine hour each way motorcycle ride. Would you like to hop on the back? And she's like, Yes. <laughs> and she got the time off work. <laughs> yeah, so I think that was a good uh, interview process. Yeah, for... you're pretty adventurous. How determined are you to see this through, this grand adventure? I'm pretty f***ing determined. I don't get seasick. <laughs> <laughs> pretty determined. Curse. What state are you from? Oh, you already said that. You gotta remember that I'm a very gullible person. I'll believe everything you say. I love that. God. I already got her once. I was like, hey, can you please hold the negative lead on the on the thing on this side and I'm gonna check continuity. <laughs> right when she put it on, I'm like, <laughs> she jumped like four feet. <laughs> oh, this is even worse. He told me that the mosquitoes here give you a fever that makes you lose your hair. <laughs> I totally believe it. <laughs> All right, that's led into the questions. Anything else you want to divulge? No. <laughs> <laughs>